Everything you think you know about cave women is wrong. We've all seen the museum displays, muscular men hunting mammoths while women gather berries and tend fires. It's complete nonsense. Recent archaeological evidence proves that prehistoric women were skilled hunters, master toolmakers, and spiritual leaders. They weren't sidekicks in human evolution. They were equal partners in survival. For decades, we've been sold a simple story about our ancestors. Man the hunter dominated prehistoric life, while woman the gatherer stayed close to home with the children. But here's the kicker. This entire theory was built on zero evidence, and I'm about to show you proof that will blow your mind. The theory spread like wildfire through academia and popular culture, giving us countless museum displays and documentaries showing muscular cavemen battling saber-toothed cats while passive women picked plants nearby. There's just one problem. The evidence never supported this story. Sarah Lacey, a biological anthropologist at the University of Delaware, puts it bluntly. People found things in the past, and they just automatically gendered them male, and didn't acknowledge the fact that everyone we found in the past has these markers, whether in their bones or in stone tools that are being placed in their burials. When archaeologists discovered stone projectiles buried with men, they called them hunting tools. When identical weapons appeared with women, suddenly they became something else entirely. This gender bias ran so deep that researchers ignored obvious evidence. Recent archaeological research shows there is little evidence to support a strict sexual division of labor in the Paleolithic, which lasted from 3.3 million years ago until 12,000 years ago. The assumption that cavemen had rigid gender roles reflects our modern prejudices, not prehistoric reality. The first crack in the Man the Hunter myth came from the most unlikely place imaginable. I'm talking about something so simple, you probably walked past it in a museum without thinking twice. Dean Snow, an archaeologist at Pennsylvania State University, analyzed hundreds of hand stencils in caves across France and Spain. By measuring finger-length ratios, he made a stunning discovery. Three-quarters of handprints in ancient cave art were left by women, overturning decades of archaeological dogma. But handprints were just the beginning. Here's where it gets wild. When archaeologists cracked open 30,000-year-old graves, they found women buried with the exact same deadly weapons as men. Spears, knives, hunting gear. The works. If women weren't hunting, why were they taking arsenals to the afterlife? When scientists examined bone trauma patterns in ancient skeletons, they found no differences between males and females. Both sexes showed the characteristic injuries of hunters who got dangerously close to large prey animals. Even more compelling evidence comes from modern hunter-gatherer societies. Anthropologists studying recent foraging cultures found that women hunted in 50 of these societies, or about 79%, regardless of maternal status. More than 70% of female hunting appeared to be intentional rather than opportunistic. In societies where hunting was the primary source of food, women participated 100% of the time. Understanding why women hunted effectively requires examining their biological advantages. Kara Okabach, a physiologist at the University of Notre Dame, explains that while men excel at short bursts of power and speed, women have a crucial edge in endurance activities. Men have an advantage over women in activities requiring speed and power, such as sprinting and throwing. But women have an advantage over men in activities requiring endurance, such as running. Here's the secret weapon nobody talks about, estrogen. Think of it like premium fuel for your muscles. While men's bodies are built like sports cars, fast but burn out quickly, women's bodies are more like hybrid engines. They just keep going and going. And this advantage is about to become crucial in ways you'd never expect. Paleolithic hunting relied heavily on persistence hunting, where humans would chase prey over long distances until the animals collapsed from exhaustion. This technique played to women's physiological strengths perfectly. So what did a typical day look like for Paleolithic women? The answer is incredibly varied and demanding. Archaeological evidence reveals that women's daily activities included everything from tool making to spiritual leadership. Picture waking up in the Ice Age. Your first thought isn't coffee, it's whether your fire died overnight. Because if it did, your family's dead within days. No fire equals no cooked food, no warmth, no protection from predators circling your camp. 
but managing fire was just the beginning of what these women had to master. Tool making consumed significant portions of each day. Women crafted everything from cutting tools to projectile points, creating custom equipment for different tasks. Food processing required enormous skill and knowledge. Grinding stones have been found in Israel dating back at least 12,000 years ago associated with ovens, suggesting the routine making of dough and baking of bread. Women mastered complex techniques for processing plant foods, creating nutritious meals from roots, seeds, and grains that sustained their communities through harsh seasons. Here's the thing though, hunting might sound impressive, but gathering actually kept people alive. This wasn't simple berry picking, but required encyclopedic knowledge of seasonal availability, processing methods, and potential dangers. Women needed to know which plants were edible, when they ripened, how to neutralize toxins, and where to find them across vast territories. The work was physically demanding. Ensuring that food was provided for the family every day required climbing trees, digging, grinding, traveling long distances, and carrying things back. Women developed carrying systems using woven baskets and animal hide containers, innovations that revolutionized food transport and storage. But here's what blew my mind researching this. These women were basically human Google searches with legs. One wrong berry could kill your entire family. One missed medicinal plant meant death from infection. They had to memorize thousands of species, know exactly when and where to find them, and pass this life or death database to their kids. And we haven't even gotten to the most shocking part yet. But wait, if women were out hunting and making tools, who watched the kids? That's where another myth falls apart. Raising children in the Ice Age was a community effort, not a burden that isolated women from other activities. Think of it as the original daycare system, except instead of finger painting, kids learned to track mammoths. And this system solved a problem that still frustrates parents today. This shared responsibility allowed women to participate fully in hunting, tool making, and other essential activities. Pregnancy and childbirth didn't sideline women for months at a time. Pregnancy, lactation, child rearing, and menstruation are not permanently disabling events, as researchers found among the living Agta of the Philippines who continue to hunt during these life periods. Women adapted their activities during late pregnancy, but quickly returned to full participation. Children learned by observation and participation rather than formal instruction. Young girls and boys alike learned hunting, gathering, tool making, and survival skills. Archaeological evidence shows that children as young as five or six created their own hand stencils in caves, participating in artistic and potentially spiritual activities. The evidence gets even crazier when you look at cave art. Beyond those female handprints, women likely created much of the spectacular animal art that defines Paleolithic creativity. Snow theorizes that if women were doing most of the cave art, it's possible they played a larger, more important role in how hunter-gatherer societies function than has been thought. Women also served as spiritual leaders. The earliest known Paleolithic shaman dating to about 30,000 years ago was female. Archaeological evidence from burial sites reveals that some women held positions of exceptional status in their communities, interred with elaborate grave goods and ritual objects. One particularly striking example comes from the 8,500-year-old burial of the Shaman of Bad Durenberg in Germany. The woman was buried in red clay reserved for important and respected individuals, with a headdress made of deer antlers and pierced boar teeth pendants, and items made from many other bones, even from cranes and tortoises. This wasn't someone relegated to domestic duties, but a powerful community leader. Now here's the biggest misconception of all. Reality was far more flexible and practical. During the Paleolithic era, most people lived in small groups. You live in such a small society. You have to be really, really flexible. Everyone has to be able to pick up any role at any time. Survival demanded that everyone master multiple skills. A hunting expedition might require both men and women. Food gathering often involved the whole community. Tool making, child care, and spiritual activities crossed gender lines constantly. The idea of rigid division only makes sense if you ignore the practical realities of Ice Age life. 
So if Paleolithic societies were relatively equal, when did everything change? The answer will probably make you angry. Everything changed with farming. The moment humans started caring more about owning land than supporting people, women's status crashed harder than a mammoth falling off a cliff. And I can prove it with their teeth. Farming created new social dynamics around property ownership, inheritance, and paternity certainty. Archaeological evidence shows this decline dramatically. When agriculture developed, women's teeth show increased levels of stress and more disease, all coming about with farming. Modern research is revolutionizing our understanding of prehistoric women. Instead of passive gatherers, they emerge as dynamic participants in every aspect of Paleolithic life. They hunted dangerous game, created tools, led spiritual ceremonies, and produced stunning art that still captivates us today. This new picture changes everything about how we understand human evolution. For three million years, males and females both participated in subsistence gathering for their communities, and dependence on meat and hunting was driven by both sexes. It's not something that only men did, and that therefore male behavior drove evolution. Understanding Paleolithic women's actual roles challenges modern assumptions about gender and capability. What we take as de facto gender roles today are not inherent. Do not characterize our ancestors. We were a very egalitarian species for millions of years in many ways. This doesn't mean Paleolithic life was utopian. It was harsh, dangerous, and demanding for everyone involved. But within those constraints, people organized themselves around survival and cooperation rather than rigid hierarchies. So the next time you're in a museum and see those displays of passive cave women picking berries, I want you to laugh. Because now you know what archaeologists are just figuring out. Those women weren't sidekicks. They were badasses who could track a wounded mammoth for miles, craft tools that could slice through bone, and lead spiritual ceremonies that connected their people to forces we can barely imagine. Paleolithic women were hunters, artists, innovators, and leaders. They tracked dangerous animals across frozen landscapes, created tools that could cut through hide and bone, painted masterpieces on cave walls, and led their communities through spiritual ceremonies. Their daily lives were demanding, varied, and essential to their community's survival. They weren't confined to domestic roles, but participated fully in the great human adventure of surviving and thriving during the Ice Age. Understanding their true contributions doesn't diminish anyone else's achievements. Instead, it reveals the full scope of human capability and resilience. The story of our species becomes more inspiring, not less, when we acknowledge that survival and progress came from everyone working together. Paleolithic women weren't supporting characters in human evolution. They were co-authors of our species' greatest achievements, and their legacy deserves recognition 30,000 years later. Next time you face a challenge that seems impossible, remember those Ice Age women who hunted woolly rhinos, created fire from nothing, and painted beauty on cave walls by flickering torchlight. If they could thrive in a world of predators and ice, imagine what you can accomplish today.